Churches chimed three quarters past eleven as the two figures emerged on London Bridge. The young woman advanced with a swift and rapid step and looked about her as though in quest of some expected object. The young man, who slunk along in the deepest shadows he could find and at some distance accommodated his pace to hers, stopping when she stopped and as she moved again, creeping stealthily on but never allowing himself in the ardour of his pursuit to gain upon her. Thus they crossed the bridge, from the Middlesex to the Surrey shore, when the woman, disappointed in her anxious scrutiny of the foot passengers, turned back. The movement was sudden, but the man was not thrown off his guard by it, but shrinking into one of the recesses which surmount the piers of the bridge, and leaning over the parapet the better to conceal his figure, he suffered her to pass. When she was about the same distance in advance as she had been before, he slipped quietly down and followed her again. At nearly the centre of the bridge, she stopped. He stopped. It was a very dark night. The day had been unfavourable, and at that hour and place there were few people stirring. Such as there were, hurried past, possibly without seeing, certainly without noticing, either the woman or the man. Their appearance was not attractive of such of London's destitute population as chanced to take their way over the bridge that night, and they stood there in silence, neither speaking nor spoken to. The girl had taken a few turns to and fro, closely watched by her hidden observer, when the heavy bell of St. Paul's tolled for the death of another day. Midnight had come upon the crowded city, upon the palace, the night cellar, the jail, the madhouse, the chambers of birth and death, of health and sickness, upon the rigid face of the corpse and the calm sleep of the child. 